On its official website on Wednesday, 29th of March 2023, FIFA formally decided to revoke its decree on Indonesia's status as host of the U-20 World Cup. To get a clear perspective on FIFA's decision and its implications for Indonesia, we are now connected via Zoom with the founder and chairman of Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia, or FPCI, and former Indonesian ambassador to the United States, His Excellency Dino Pati Jalal. Hello, good day, Pak Dino. Thank you for joining us. Hi, this guy. It's great to be here. Pak Dino, I would like to go straight to the hottest topic right now, the removal of Indonesia as host of the U-20 World Cup here. And as you know, everyone is very disappointed that Indonesia, that was supposed to host the U-20 FIFA World Cup this year, and then FIFA announced on Wednesday that it has revoked Indonesia's status as host for the football tournament. Now, in the official statement, FIFA mentioned because of current circumstances as the reason behind the decision, with no further explanation. But at the end of the statement, it says that FIFA remains committed to actively assisting PSSI in the transformation process following the tragedy that occurred in October 2022. Now, Padino, of course, you are no stranger to the world of diplomacy, where each word is carefully selected to convey a message. What do you think about the statement from FIFA for this incident? Well, I think it's very clear we don't need to beat around the bush. Uh, the reason uh, is because uh, the uh, because FIFA felt that uh, their players, uh, the Israeli players, would not be welcome uh, in two provinces, uh, which is uh, uh, Bali uh, and, and Central Java, because they have... Uh, made explicit statements that, that would reject uh, Israeli teams, right? So I think uh, since those statements were made, uh, the draw that was supposed to be scheduled in Bali uh, was cancelled. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, FIFA thought that um, uh, it would be impossible to hold the uh, World Cup uh, under 20 in Indonesia uh, because these uh, players, uh, Israeli players, would not be uh, welcome and FIFA would not be able to hold the tournament as they had planned. Right? So uh, I think everything else is just secondary. Uh, uh, those are the primary reasons. And I do feel that that is very unfortunate uh, because uh, this would be a historic event for uh, Indonesia. Uh, it would really stoke pride. Uh, in, in the country, you know, after the success of the G20, you know, uh, we're having a good economy and, and this would be, uh, uh, you know, uh, an amazing sports event for Indonesia. And uh, most of all, it would be the first time an Indonesian uh, uh, national soccer team, football team would be participating in a World Cup event because we would be the host. But now those hopes are dashed. Uh, this uh, uh, really special young athletes uh, of Indonesia would not be uh, competing in the uh, under-20 anymore. So, so that's really a sad uh, tragedy here. In relation to the Israeli team, Padino, President Jokowi have made a statement that the selection of Indonesia as host of the U-20 FIFA will not change Indonesia's position in supporting the independence of the Palestinian people and this two-state solution for the Palestine-Israel conflict. Now, as we know, uh, a lot of ruckus was made when a few people made some comments and then the public opposition was also very loudly clear, basically, by FIFA. But do you think the Indonesian public opposition and the politicians' rejection of the Israel teams was excessively politicized? Absolutely. A absolutely excessively politicized, as uh, you put it. Look, uh if the Israeli team would have participated uh, in Indonesia for the U-20, that would not in the slightest bit change our position, our political and diplomatic position on the Palestine issue, right? So that remains totally unchanged. And uh, there have been precedents whereby Israeli athletes and politicians have taken part in international events in Indonesia. Just last month in February, four uh, Israeli cyclists uh, took part in the uh, uh, international cyclist competition in Jakarta. And last uh, year, uh, Israeli parliamentarians took part in the interparliamentary union in Bali, the same place where the governor had uh, now uh, rejected Israeli players. And uh, at the interparliamentary union uh, uh, congress, 
a number of Indonesian uh, parliamentarians uh, took, uh, uh, attended also. And in fact, the event was also hosted by the Indonesian uh, parliament, right? So there's a lot of inconsistency in, in how this was done. And I would have thought if uh, the Israelis came to Indonesia and we had uh, shown uh, that we could protect them, we could give them a fair competition, uh, and those who uh, protested uh, on the Palestinian issue could still come and say uh, free Israel, uh, sorry, free Palestine uh, uh, banners and T-shirts, whatever. Uh, I would even have the idea of sending flowers for Palestine uh, to the hotels uh, where the Israelis are staying. You know, saying, hey, you know, send our best regards to the Palestinians. Uh, please uh, protect their rights. Uh, please send them our love. You know, that would be much more sophisticated. An, an elegant way uh, of, of us in handling this uh, situation. And we would get everything. We would get the World Cup uh, in Indonesia. We would get the economic benefits, you know, a couple trillion rupiah for our own people. We would stoke the pride of Indonesian youth. We would allow our national team to compete in the under 20. Uh, and we would show the world that we are very civilized. Uh, you know, screaming all the time doesn't get things done, right? Doesn't get sometimes the effect that you want, but a uh, sophisticated uh, approach uh, that, uh, as I suggested uh, before, would impress the whole world and would enhance Indonesia's uh, image even further without the slightest bit sacrificing our position on the Palestinian issue. And besides, uh, keep in mind, besides the Palestinian themselves, Palestinian government has not rejected Israel taking part in FIFA under 20. So there's a lot of uh, my Arab ambassador's friends are saying, uh, you know, is Indonesia more Palestine than Palestine? Is Indonesia more Arab than the Arabs? Yeah, you know, on this question, right? It's, it's, uh, I think it's totally uh, sad and disappointing, yeah. Yes, Padino. Now, amidst all the disappointment, we are also holding our breath and waiting what comes next from FIFA. As we know, there might be some sanctions that will be imposed on PSSI. And President Jokowi has actually sent Pak Erick Tohir on a mission to try to persuade FIFA not to put any sanctions on Indonesia. Do you think this will work? And what do you think should be done to make sure that FIFA sanctions Indonesia will be very minimal? Well, I mean, it's all up to diplomacy, right? Uh, and, and again, I hope Foreign Minister uh, Retno will step up to the plate as well because uh, she hasn't said anything uh, uh, on, on this issue, uh, whereas the president has said something and the minister for uh, state-owned company, Mr. Eric, has said things. The, the head of Nahdlatul Ulama has said things. But the foreign ministry needs to step up and say something because this is becoming a diplomatic issue. And, and for, for them not to be heard at all, not to be seen at all in this uh, is, is uh, you know, it's is not so good, right? Uh, but definitely Indonesia needs uh, first, I mean, uh, the first order of business is damage control. Uh, and, and secondly, uh, FIFA mentioned the Kanjuruhan incident, right? So uh, we need to assure uh, FIFA that in any local uh, and international football events uh, in Indonesia, that there, there, there won't be any repeat of the Kanjuruhan uh, incident. And thirdly, really, we just need to focus on, on uh, building uh, a, a very uh, competent football team, both at the under-20 level and at the national level, and to make sure that uh, they are not uh, depoliticized uh, anymore uh, and that uh, they're given support by, by all the parties and all the, uh, all the nation. You know, I think that's what they want. You know, these are very special kids, and they deserve the best, and they deserve all our support. Yes, indeed, Padino, and uh, as you must also agree, the most heartbreaking part of this is the loss of the opportunity for our young players to compete in such a big stage. And most of them, as we must understand, are really heartbroken. What would you say to these young players and to PSSI to make uh, their spirit not as dampened as now? Uh, don't give up on, on your dreams. Uh, these things uh, may... Uh... Uh, sadden you, uh, but uh, you're all champions uh, at heart. Uh, and I know one day you will prove to the world that uh, you, you, you are a, a, a champion. Uh, you, you are the best that Indonesia has to offer uh, in, in the world of, of uh, football. Yeah. You still have many years ahead of you. And we believe in you. Uh, and uh, we hope you will continue practicing uh, and, uh, and uh, demonstrate that you are the champion that, that uh, you could be. 
Pak Dino, thank you for ending our chat with such an optimistic and uplifting tone. Always a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sister.